this year of failure around your life, I'm announcing to you at this miracle service that God still um, destined for you to be great. To rise to a point where you... Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something about greatness. Greatness is also measured by the degree to which your personal goals have been satisfied that you can now turn and focus on lifting others and being a blessing provided you are still at a realm of meeting your needs and trying to make ends meet you are not great are you getting what i'm telling you now that god desires believers that we rise to a point where god would have sorted us left right and center and now you can have the privilege and the convenience to use your influence, your intelligence, the anointing of God upon your life, and then your resources to now begin to reveal Jesus to many around you. That's greatness. Unfortunately, not many people are ever able to rise to that level because at best, most people keep scrounging around the base of destiny, fighting with one another in petty jealousy, not knowing that everyone has been destined for a glorious life in Christ. It doesn't matter what background you came from. Listen carefully. It doesn't matter what has worked or what has not worked in your life. Male or female, old or young, there is, there is potential for greatness in everyone. You know, we live in a world where it looks like God particularly handpicked a few people in ministry, handpicked a few people in business, handpicked a few people in politics, and then the remaining keep sharing and admiring. No, that can't be God. Can I tell you this? If all of us in this auditorium and around become great in Christ, it still will not interrupt anything as far as our personal results are concerned. Do you agree with me? Question. If God grants you the grace to build your house, does it affect my house? If God grants you the grace to take your children to good schools, does it affect any other person? No. The idea that just a few people should stand out and the rest keep sharing like, like a flock, like animals, is not a, it's a very wrong perception about God. The Bible says great grace was upon every one of them. We have a heritage of greatness in Christ. But can I tell you this? It takes the empowerment of the Spirit. It takes the empowerment of the Spirit to lift people, like we read in that scripture. It is God that makes great. If God does not lift you, you cannot be lifted. Listen, even principles don't just work on their own. It is the power of God that empowers principles to work. Principles on their own don't just work. There is a force from the realm of the spirit that empowers principles. I like to give examples with cooking. Many of us here are good in the kitchen. As you cut your ingredients and mix this and mix that according to the principles, usually that pot is kept on fire. Is that true? Something is happening under while you are adding the ingredients. Most of the foods that we eat require fire, require cooking to assume the stage that we want. More than just adherence to principles, you must encounter the power that makes for performance. Can I tell you, a majority of what God is going to be doing tonight is empowerment. Empowerment. Just placing something on your life. Placing something on your destiny. For some of you, adding to what you already have. Because the validity of what you have, it is exhausted. It's clear in your life now that you have stretched and it is enough. Man of God, you can have a thousand sermons. You need the power of God to produce results. Genuine results. Can I tell you this? With all due respect, I can tell you sincerely, human beings are not stupid. Nobody will come and gather and sit down to listen to you if they know you don't have anything to offer. Human beings are not idiots. They will not shut their shops, leave their homes, take the risk, fly from one nation to the other. Who do you think you are without the power of God? But when that power is there, to the degree that is needed. 
Kalapash, Kalakatabarakutiasa. 